Hello everyone, Mr. Fitri coming to you again um, from the internet. <laughs> Today we're going to start Unit 2. This unit is about rocks and minerals. Now, this class and our next class, right, for our entire unit, are going to be a little uh, perhaps difficult. I say this because if we were at school, I would be able to show you examples of the various rocks and minerals I'm talking about. So you would be able to, 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 to hold, to examine, uh, to, to look at these examples. Uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to do that on the internet, but when we are back at school, uh, hopefully we'll be able to review uh, this unit to look at the examples and then do a, a short lab uh, where we look at the examples and identify um, what makes uh, each mineral or each rock unique. Anyway, so today we're going to start our first lesson, Properties of Minerals. So our objectives today, uh, first is what is a mineral? How are minerals identified? Okay, how do we tell them apart? And how do minerals form? Our vocabulary today, number one, mineral. A mineral is a naturally occurring solid. Next, an element. This is the most basic form of matter. I'm sure you're all uh, familiar with the periodic table of elements. That's in the bottom right-hand corner there. Okay, these are all the elements uh, we know about. Okay, they are the most basic form of matter. Okay, whether it's hydrogen or oxygen or nitrogen or neon or iron, okay? Whatever it is, it's on there. And these elements, as we'll see, make up not only minerals, but rocks. Next, a solution is a mixture in which one substance is dissolved in another. So it's a mixture, of, uh, a mixture in which something is dissolved in another. I like to give the example of dissolving sugar in water. Okay, when you put sugar in water, it breaks down, right? You don't see the small cubes of sugar, you just see the water. Next, geode is a rounded, hollow rock that is often lined with mineral crystals. Uh, down at the bottom of this slide, you see a geode a rock where if you cut it in half and look in the middle there you go there's the mineral crystals crystallization okay how do these crystals form well this is the process by which atoms are arranged to form a material that has a crystal structure okay? we're going to look at uh, these crystal structures a little later two more here organic from living matter, okay? Anything that's organic comes from something that is living, okay? Uh, perhaps, uh, you know, plants and animals, simply put, plants and animals. Uh, or, as we'll see here, um, perhaps dead plants, dead animals. What do they form over time? Inorganic is the opposite. <laughs> this is anything that is not from living matter. Okay, Anything that comes from something that was not alive. Okay, objective number one. What is a mineral? So minerals have to have these five qualities, and they must have all of them, okay? They must be naturally occurring, 
which means they're formed by natural processes. They must be solid. They must have a crystal structure. Particles of a mineral line up in a pattern that repeats over and over again. This repeating pattern forms a solid called a crystal. Formed by inorganic processes, okay? Again, formed from things that were not living. And they must have a definite chemical composition. Okay? This means that a mineral always contains certain elements, and those elements are always in definite proportions. We're going to see that in the next slide here. Okay. Now, building off of this, okay, minerals, compounds, and elements. Almost all minerals are compounds. What does this mean? Well, it mean, a compound, I should say, are two or more elements that are combined so that elements no longer have distinct properties. Okay? Elements, remember, are the most basic form of matter. Okay? So in a compound, these are combined so that they are no longer unique. Our examples here, and this relates back to our definite chemical composition from the last slide, quartz, is made up of silicon and oxygen. That's why our chemical uh, formula here is SiO2. All right, that's, a, that's a mineral quartz. Calcite is also a mineral. And this is made up of calcium, carbon, and oxygen. All right, again, CaCO2, uh, CaCO3, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. CaCO3. Now, while most minerals are compounds, some elements occur in nature in their pure form, and they are not compounds, okay? These elements, as an example, are copper, silver, and gold, okay? These are both elements and minerals, and when they are minerals, they are pure, okay? They are not combined with anything else. So again, what is a mineral? Well, again, it's naturally occurring. It's solid. It has a crystal structure. It forms by inorganic processes and has a definite, definite chemical composition. Okay. And minerals can be compounds, okay, made up of several elements, or simply be pure. Objective two. How are minerals identified? So what we need to know first is that geologists have identified more than 4,000 minerals. Uh, and so with that many minerals, it can be hard to tell them apart. So we have some, some identification techniques. First one the color, okay? Now, a mineral's color may vary, okay? It may be different. An example is that quartz, okay, or mineral quartz, can be a multitude of colors. It can be purple, it can be white, pink, orange, green, etc., etc., okay? Now, just because it's different colors doesn't mean it isn't quartz, Okay, but it can be hard to tell them apart. That's where streak comes in. Number two, streak. The streak of a mineral is the color of its powder. Okay, the color of a mineral may vary, but the streak does not. That means the powder does not change. So quartz will always have the same streak, even if the color is different. So if we look over at this picture, we have four different minerals, and each you know look grayish, blackish color, okay? But if we look at the streak on that white uh, uh, piece in the center, you see that the streak is different. Some is brown, uh, some are red, gray, blackish, okay? 
So while the color may vary, the streak does not. Remember that. Number three, the luster. This is how light reflects off of a mineral's surface. Okay, how does light reflect off of it? We have a couple uh, ways to describe this reflection, and you'll see it here. We have a metallic, which is the, the mineral galena, a pearly, which is the mineral talc, a satin spar comes off as silky, and then graphite is greasy. Okay? So this is another way to identify different minerals. Number four here, okay, hardness. So we use the Mohs hardness scale to rank the hardness of a mineral from one to 10. But how do we know where a mineral falls? Is it a one? Is it a three? Is it a six? Is it a nine? Well, we use a scratch test to determine that, okay? A mineral can only scratch minerals softer than itself, okay? It cannot scratch harder minerals. Okay, so if we look at that picture, calcite, a number three, can scratch talc because it's harder, which is a number one. But talc, again, a number one, cannot scratch calcite, a number three, okay? If we look down at seven and eight, topaz, number eight, can scratch quartz, a number seven, but quartz, a number seven, cannot scratch topaz, a number eight, okay? Number five, density. Okay, we talked about density. Remember, density is mass divided by volume. Each mineral has a characteristic density, okay, a unique density. And it does not matter how big or small the mineral sample is, the density will always remain the same, okay? It will not change. Number six. This crystal structure we mentioned before, okay, is a way we identify a mineral. Geologists classify crystals by the number of faces or sides on the crystal and the angles at which the faces meet. So you see down there in the picture are different crystal systems, okay? Different amount of faces or sides and you see the angles are also uh, different, okay? Now remember, these form naturally as the atoms align themselves, okay? Like we talked about earlier. Number seven, okay? Cleavage and fracture. Cleavage is when a mineral breaks easily along flat surfaces. Okay, again, they're breaking along flat surfaces. Fracture, though, describes how a mineral looks when it breaks apart in an irregular way. Okay? So, this is much easier if I could show you an example, but think of it like this. Cleavage will break apart smoothly on a flat surface. Fracture will be bumpy. There won't be many flat or uh, organized uh, flat surfaces, okay? So again, cleavage and fracture, it depends on how the mineral breaks apart. Number eight, okay? Last one here is special properties, okay? Some minerals, okay, only some, not all, can bend light, some can conduct electricity or glow under certain lights, and some are magnetic, okay? So, so these have special properties. So our objective review here, how are minerals identified? Again, we've got our, the color, okay? The color 
varies, okay, it differs, remember that. But the streak, or the powder of the mineral, does not change. We've got luster, the reflection of light off of the mineral. We've got the hardness of the mineral, which we uh, determine using a scratch test. Remember, minerals can only scratch other minerals that are softer than themselves. Okay. We've got density, crystal structure, cleavage, okay, breaking along flat surfaces, and fracture, breaking apart in irregular ways, and finally, special properties. All right. Now, last objective, really quickly here. I don't want to bore you to death. <laughs> How do minerals form? Three ways. Organic minerals. Some form by organic processes. Okay. Minerals from solutions. When elements and compounds that are dissolved in water leave a solution, crystallization occurs. If you look at this picture, I think it's pretty cool. This is where solutions in a massive cave have over a long period of time created these huge, huge crystals. Okay, these are the selenite crystals in Mexico. Just extraordinary. Finally, uh, minerals from magma and lava. Okay. Minerals form as hot magma cools inside the crust or as lava hardens on the surface. Okay. When they cool to a solid state, they form crystals. All right, so again, how do minerals form? Organic minerals, minerals from solutions, and minerals from magma and lava. All right. So that's that for our mineral uh, lesson. Next will be rocks. And again, we will look at these uh, a little bit more clearly in class when we finally get back to school, okay? So we can hold them, examine them, and then test our knowledge. All right, thanks guys.